Hello and welcome to the installation guide for Visor Technic's new wizard modules. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to install a complete full kit, which has all five modules. Uh, bear in mind, you can buy the kit as a front only, which is the two indicator modules, or you can buy the rear kit, which is three modules. So on the rear, we've got two indicator modules, and then we've got that optional one, which we can fit, which reactivates that tail light illumination that's missing from our global bikes, UK, Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, everywhere else in the world, apart from North America, um, and it can turn back on that tail light illumination. And that is my preferred way to install this kit with all five modules. Um, but up here on the right-hand side, you're gonna find the timestamps so that you can follow along and you can move and re-watch re whichever sections you like. Uh, I'm also gonna show you the tools that you need and take you through step-by-step step exactly how we fit these. Let's get started. So these are the basic tools we need to install these three modules on the rear of the bike. Just bear in mind, these two indicator modules, they're not handed. So you can fit this to the left or the right and vice versa. You can't get this wrong. This module here, this is the run on module. Now it is not essential to install that for these here to work. So in other words, this is an option. I prefer to have this because it adds additional illumination to the rear of the bike, but you don't have to install it for everything else to work. This is entirely up to you. And depending on your country, depending on your lighting laws and regulations, you may or may not need it anyway. Then we're going to need the ignition key, two flat blade screwdrivers, a 3.8 ratchet, a 3.8 extension bar, a TX40. Now the TX40 is to remove eight bolts. I'll show you those in a moment. And we need a cutting device or a pair of side cutters. That's not essential, but these are the basic tools we need to install these three modules. So let's have a look and see how long it takes to install them. So to install those three rear modules, the first thing we need to do is use the key to take the seat off. And I'm gonna try and do this all in one take without actually standing on that side of the bike. So the seat just lifts off like so. If you have got um, heated seats, I'll show you how you do those as well. So we'll take the rear one off. If I take the rear seat and turn it over, if you've got heated seats, you're gonna have a connector like this. And up the, up the side, there is this little lever. I'll try and zoom in and I'll just point this out to you here there is a little lever. And if you move the lever in and out, you press it and then gently wiggle that, the connector comes straight off. And it's, same, it's the same process for the, the rider's seat. So let's move those out of the way. So now what we're left with, we have got to remove first of all this rack and then this gray panel underneath. And that gives us a lot more access and makes the whole installation much easier and simpler to do. So that's when we're going to use our 3.8 ratchet our extension bar and our TX40. Now the first time you take these eight bolts out, they are going to be very tight. And I'll put a picture up in a moment and show you exactly where all these bolts are. But we've got one, two, three, one up inside there, five, six, seven, one up inside there. So we've got a total of eight bolts. But the first one we need to take off is this rack here, which is, we're gonna start here. So these are quite tight when you first take them off. So a little bit of effort. Now you don't need to watch me take uh, all the other ones on. I'll put a picture of where the bolts are, but we're gonna take all of these out and I'll speed this next process up. So what we have here, these are the four bolts. Just bear in mind that the long bolt, these ones here, they will go on the front of the grab handle, which is this black part here. Um, so when we do the installation, don't get that wrong, long ones in the front. And then this rack assembly just lifts straight off the bike and we can move on to the silver gray panel underneath. So with the gray panel, it's even easier to see our four bolts. One, two, three, Four. Again, they're the TX40. Uh, when you first take them out, they're gonna be quite hard to get undone. But once you get them loose, they will come out. And again, you don't need to watch me take them all out, but I'm gonna take all four bolts out and then lift this panel straight off. So I'll speed this part up. So now all four bolts are off, one more thing to pay attention to. The bolts at the front, that's these two here, they're longer and they also have these long 
collars, long washers. Now on the rear, the bolts themselves are slightly shorter and the collars are shorter. So when we reassemble it, we just need to make sure long collars, long bolts go to the front. And then we can take those four completely out like so. Once we've got them, this assembly then just lifts straight off the bike, just like that. And now we've got lots of axis underneath. So now we've removed those two parts, the next part is really straightforward and very simple. This is the connector that was connected to the rear passenger heated seat. So we just need to move that out of the way for the moment. The two areas we're going to be working with here and here, these are the original BMW indicator connector points. And then here at the tail light, we also need to fit the module. So let's start with these indicators. These are really very, very simple. So there's a metal clamp. If you push down with your finger, or if you like, you can use a screwdriver and gently wiggle, these lift straight off. Now bear in mind there are two, two on the left, two on the right. We want the inside one. So this one, and this one here, they are the indicator ones. So we're gonna loosen that one off, push that metal clamp off, and then we've got this second side off. Now, the connectors themselves come apart very easily. You're going to need to use your first flat blade screwdriver. There is a little tiny tab at the end here, and we're just going to place the screwdriver gently under there, like so, and then wiggle and pull apart. That's how easy they come off. We'll do the other side as well. Take the flat blade of the screwdriver, gently place it under there, gently wiggle, and they come apart. So now we're ready to install the indicator modules. Let's get those. So here we have our two indicator modules. Bear in mind they're not handed, so either one can go left or right, and they are really easy. So we've disconnected these two parts over here, you can't get this wrong because there is a male end and a female end. So we're going to connect the female end to the male part of the BMW system. And again, we've got a little cutout. On the other side, it's completely smooth and flat. On this side, we've got the cutout where that clip is going to fit. And you gently push them together. And if you listen, you'll hear a little tiny clip. That's clipped in. And then we could do the same thing on the other side. Make sure we've got the tab lining up with the cutout on the top here push them in and you'll hear a click. Well, not such a loud click. And then this module here at the back can be clipped into that original part here. And we can tidy this up in a moment. So again, we're gonna work on the opposite side. We want the male end of the BMW system to the female end of the visor system. So we've got this little cutout, this little hole at the end. We're going to slide it over there, listen for the click. Same, when, same on the opposite side, push these two together like so, like that, and then refit this back into this metal clamp here, just gentle pressure like that, and in it goes. Now those two modules, they're done. We don't have to do anything else to them. So what I'll do now, I'll move the camera so we can have a look at the rear, so you can see more clearly what we have to do for the reactivation module. So now we're working right at the rear of the bike on the tail lamp assembly. And this is the module we're going to fit. So first of all, the easiest thing to do is to show you that with the module that we're going to plug in, one side is male and the other side is female. So again, we can't connect this the wrong, the wrong way round. So inside the tail light, the wiring harness plugs straight in. And it, the socket is exactly the same as what Visor Technic use on their module. So if I turn that sideways, I want to show you this little tiny lever on the side. And if we press that lever in with my finger, it will release it and allow us to pull it out of the tail light very, very easily. It's a bit tricky to film in there, but it is the same plug that goes in there. So all we're going to do with the two screwdrivers, one is going to push this little lever in here, and the other is going to pull the socket or pull the plug forward. So let me show you how you do that. So what we're going to do, we're going to use the two screwdrivers, one behind, one pushing in the plug, and with one gentle movement, it then comes straight out. And we can actually take that plug straight out of there without cutting the cable tie. If you want more room, you can cut the cable tie. There is a replacement in the kit, but actually I found these just come straight out without a problem. So all we're left with doing now, and it's really straightforward, is connecting this adapter, this module, the wizard module from Visor Technic. Now again, we can't get this wrong because there's a male end 
and a female end. We're going to take the female end and first of all connect it to the BMW harness. Now we can't get this wrong because one way around, let's turn it down, it, it will not physically connect together. It only goes one way. And if you listen, we might hear the click. No, it was a fairly quiet click. And then we turn it around. We've now got the plug. We want this lever over here on this side of the bike. And all we're going to do, we're going to pass it back under like so. It might take you a couple of seconds and then you can use either your fingers. I'm gonna use a screwdriver so hopefully you can see. And when we push it in, if you listen carefully, you'll hear it click back into place. That click was it moving back into the right place. So we're done. We can tidy this up uh, if we want to fit an additional cable tie to hold that tight or a bit of cloth tape. In fact, I'll use a cable tie in a moment and we'll cable tie it. In fact, I'll show you what I'll do. So what I'm gonna do, I think, is we've got a bit of wiring harness there. Just to keep that module from rattling around, we're gonna take a cable tie through there like so. like that and cut the excess off. So that's it, we're done. We've got the module fitted here, we've got the module fitted here, and we've got the module fitted here. Uh, and we could actually just tidy this up with a bit more of cable tie, but I, I think for demonstration purposes, you can see how easy it is to fit. All we need to do now is reverse fit everything we've just removed. So the gray part first, followed by the rear rack, followed by the two seats. So these are all the tools you need to install these two front modules. These are going to turn off the DRLs, the orange running lights. So we need one flat blade screwdriver, either a pair of side cutters or a sharp knife to cut a cable tie, and then one screwdriver with a TX25. And that really is all you need. Uh, I'm using cardboard because I find it easier to keep the screws in order, so we can't get that wrong. But this is it. This is all we need to install these two modules. So now we're working on the front right-hand side of the bike, and we need to remove three panels to fit these wizard modules. So let me show you how we're going to do this. Now this and the panel on the other side is only held in by five screws. One, two, three, four, five. Now these three you can't see. I'm gonna change the camera so that we can see underneath in a moment. But once those five screws are removed, there's one clip up here, which I'll also show you how we take that off. And then this panel just comes forward towards the camera completely off. So let's start off by taking these two top screws out first. These are fairly easy to get out. And then what we're going to use is a piece of cardboard to keep the bolts or keep the screws in order because they are slightly different. So with a piece of cardboard, like so, we're just going to make the five holes in a position where we've took them out, like so, so that we can't get them wrong. And when we've took these three, one, two, three, that screw from underneath, we'll also put them in the cardboard so we can't get their location wrong. So I'll change the camera around and we'll have a look how you get those three out next. So now we're looking at the front right hand side from underneath. Now you can clearly see the three screws that we're going to remove. There's this one here, Torx 25, this one up here, and this one very at the very top. These are the only three additional screws that we need to remove. So now we've removed those additional three screws from the inside and we've got them safe in our cardboard, it's time to take this panel off. Now the panel won't fall on the floor once we've got those five screws out because it's still retained by one clip at the very top. Now this is very easy. What we need to do with this panel is move it outwards, outwards towards you, towards the camera. So we just place our fingers either side and with one firm swift pull, it pops straight off. Now, you can't put this back wrong because at the top here, there is this little lug. And when we return fit it, it's going to mount onto this little plug here. So I'll just show you this now so that when you come to refit it, you know exactly what you're doing. You're going to offer this panel up. All you need to do is line up initially this hole here, this hole here, that clip will automatically be in the right place. And with a firm press of your thumb, this is all you need to do. And if you have a listen, you'll hear a very firm click. That's it. So that panel is now back in, and that's what you need to do when you refit this panel. So one more time, fingers either side, full, firm pull outwards, it comes straight off. Now, we now have access to the next phase. We're gonna take the panel off on the other side, which is exactly the same process as we've just done. 
and then we need to remove this beak. So let's move on. Just bear in mind that what we're working on today is a GS. The GSA is ever so slightly different in terms of the way that the panels mount and the size of the panel. So you may find that there are some extra screws that need to be removed. I only have a GS to show you, so that's what we're working with today. So we're still working on the right hand side of the bike. We've got our two side panels off. We've got our screw safe. What we need to remove next is this beak assembly and that is held on with seven screws. Now we're going to remove this one here this one here and then there are three additional screws on the beak and I'll show you those in a moment but first let's remove these these are fairly easy to remove again we're going to use a piece of cardboard to keep our screws safe so that we can't get them wrong and we can't get their location wrong when we're doing the reassembly um, but they do come out fairly easily and once we've got them in the cardboard they are safe so as you can see from the picture on the cardboard, we've got the two on the opposite side to do, and then we've got the three on the beak. So let's move on and take the other two screws out and move on to the location of the screws on the beak. So now we're looking at the underside of the front beak. These are the three bolts that we're going to remove. Again, they're TX25, one, two, three. They are different lengths, so keep them in the cardboard cutouts that we've got. And also just pay attention, we've got one pin through a rubber grommet here, on the same on the other side. So now working on the front of the bike, we've removed our seven screws that hold the beak in place. And now, now what we need to do is pull the beak forwards towards the camera. Now these panels on the sides, left and right are loose and you'll probably notice it starts to wiggle. So what we need to do is grab this quite firmly on each side and as we pull it forward, we're gently gonna move these outward and then this beak assembly just comes straight off. So you have to be, you start off with a little bit of a wiggle and then one swift pull like so and then the beak lifts off completely like that. It is very easy to get off. Um, it might be a bit nerve wracking the first time you do it. And now you can see here, these are the two locating pins that when we, start, when we go to refit the beak, there are these two rubber grommets. And what I find is if you put a little bit of grease on the inside of those rubber grommets, when we go to reinstall it, it is very easy. And in fact, I'll just show you now. When we move it, we, I'm going to use pressure to move these panels outwards. We're gonna move them out like so, like that. And then under here, we're just going to, I'm working underneath of my hands. I can feel those rubber grommets on those pins like so. And then there's also another tab underneath here that we, make, we need to make sure goes underneath for the screw, but we'll, you'll see that from the picture in a moment. So one more time, it just comes straight off like that. And now we've got all the access we need to fit the two modules. Let's move on. So one more small bit of advice, when you're mounting the beak, and we're actually looking at the underside now, these are the three front screws. Bear in mind, this tab here, this triangular black tab, needs to be mounted from the underside. And it is possible, if you're not being careful, that this tab slides underneath a housing here. And that is the wrong place for it to be. So when you put the beak back on, just have a look under here and make sure that that tab is on the bottom side so that when it pushes up, you can mount that screw there and screw everything correctly. And it should look like what you see now. So now we're back working on the right hand side of the bike. This is the indicator plug here where the indicator, this part here with the cable plugs into the BMW loom. We need to cut this cable tie and then we're going to unplug the indicator from the system. And this is fairly straightforward. Just be careful with your side cutters that you don't cut anything other than the cable tie. Take that off. Then we're going to use our flat blade screwdriver. We're going to go in gently here and just lift that tab, this tab here up towards you, towards the camera, and then pull that connector and it just comes straight out like that. And then all we need to do is take the Visor Technic Wizard module and fit it in between those two connection points. So the Visor modules are male and female ended, just like the BMW system, we can't get this wrong. What we're gonna do first, we're gonna take the male end of the Visor module and we're going to turn it around so that we can see this little nipple, this little edge right on the end here and that's got to clip in here. So we slide that through there like this. Gently push it in and you'll hear and see that it's clipped in the center. And we do the same with this one. We've got a little hole at the end which shows us where it's going to go. One side we've got the nipple, the other side we haven't. So we have the nipple facing you and then gently connect these two together, push them firmly 
like so, and you'll hear a little clip. So that module is now installed. All we need to do now is just tidy this up and we're gonna replace the cable tie here just to hold that firmly. So I'll do that for you next. So inside the kit, you'll find the new cable tie. If I just lift that up out of the way, you'll notice that here there is a cable tie locator. And all we need to do is pass this through like so, bring it out, and then we'll have that cable tie holding that on like so, and just connect it up. Move it in so it's flat, and that's it. And we just need to cut the excess off of the cable tie, and then we are done on this side of the bike. So now we're looking at the left-hand side of the bike. We can clearly see here, this is the BMW indicator connector. And this is the cable that goes through that cable tie up to this indicator. So all we need to do at this point is carefully cut that cable tie so that we've got access to the cables underneath. We take that out of the way. And just as we did on the other side, we're going to place the screwdriver under that little lip there, like so. It's quite hard to film and show you. And we gently pull it and that connector just comes straight out. And now we're ready to install the module. And just as we did on the other side, they are male and female, so we can't get this wrong. So we're gonna start off, we've got the hole facing outwards. We need to turn the module around so that we've got this little tiny nipple here. That's gonna plug into that connector like so. And you'll hear it clip into place and you want to visually check that the nipple is sticking through that visible hole there and then all we need to do as we did on the other side is connect these one side here has got the little tiny nipple and we need that facing the window and we just push these two together firmly you'll hear it clip like so and now we need to do all we need to do is put the cable tie back on so let's do that so then all we need to do is fit the cable tie in reverse. If I move the cable down, you can see that the cable tie just slides through here. We want the cables to be caught between the cable tie and the chassis and just gently fit that cable tie like so. And it just holds. It doesn't have to be too tight. It's just going to stop it rattling around, cut the excess off like so. And then we've got our module fitted. So now both deactivation modules are installed. What we're going to do now, or what I'm going to do, is turn the ignition on and just check that it works correctly. And I suggest you do the same before we start the reassembly process. Let's have a look. So I hope you found that guide useful with your installation. And as you've just seen, it is really straightforward to fit all five modules. But this last part, this is really for my viewers and subscribers here in Germany. Now I live in Germany uh, and my bike is a German registered bike. So my bike needs to comply with the local laws and regulations here in Germany, which as it turns out, are ever so slightly different to the UK. So you can fit all five modules in the UK without a problem. But in here in Germany, things are slightly different. So what I decided to do to be in complete fairness with a full test was to fit them. And although my bike's not due for an MOT, it's not two years old yet, I took it to one of the big testing stations and I was completely transparent and open with them. I took the kit with me, fully installed, and I showed them exactly the changes this kit makes compared to the original as it comes from factory OEM setup. Uh, and the only thing they had an issue with was this run on module. So the four indicator modules are fine. That wasn't a problem. But what they had an issue with is this module reactivating this tail light illumination. And it seems that this is only a problem here in Germany. Now, I, I don't fully understand the rules. And although it took them quite some time to go through their books and make sure, there is a funny rule that says you can have lots of brake lights on the rear of your bike, but you can't have more than two tail light markers. In other words, position markers on the rear. You can have one or two, but you can't have three. Now, the interesting thing was both testers agreed that visually the bike is safer and looks better with that module fitted. But to get the MOT pass, 
I had to remove it. So you can guess what I did when I came home with that module. So anyway, I just wanted to share that because uh, it looks like for here in Germany, these indicator modules are completely fine and it does make a big improvement in terms of visibility and safety on the rear because that indicator now is crystal clear and separated with those other functions turned off. And with now with those uh, amber running lights turned off, it's an easy choice. So uh, I mentioned this earlier in the first video, you really now have two very different routes that you can take to improve uh, the indicator lighting on your GS and GSAs. You can either go for the premium route, which is to physically, which is this kit up here, physically replace all of the indicators, which if I'm completely honest, is my preferred way to ride my bike. And, and I will be returning my bike back to this because those indicators are physically larger, they're much brighter, they're much more visible from the side of the bike. And, and for me, if I'm gonna make a change, I might as well do it with the premium kit. But I have to say, for those of you that want a simple, quick, easy, do-it-yourself solution that you can do at home very, very easily uh, with, with less of a cost and you don't have to take lots of parts off your bike, these modules are a great idea because it really does clean up um, the function on the rear and on the front. Anyway, thank you for your time. My name is Carl. The channel is called Just The Way It Is and I'll see you soon for another video. Thank you.